What's up guys? We're finally getting the sieges in a couple days, so I'm pretty excited about that. There has been a lot of planning inside our clan, maybe a little bit too much. I feel like the first many sieges are gonna be just phase roll and we're probably gonna meet like level, level 70 players and easily easily kill them, but we kind of... Um, we we pre-planned like uh, all the teams in the stronghold and some of the other ones, we'll see how that goes, but yeah. I feel like the hype kind of died down a little bit for the sieges, so I don't know if they will actually be that um, that popular on launch, but we'll see. Anyway, let's see how we do, how we do today in live arena. Yesterday I played a couple of matches, not like not a full session, but a couple of fights, which went pretty well. I beat some really strong teams yesterday of video, of course, like always. Okay, Tar starting out with uh, enemy that's 8000 points. That That's pretty high though. The points have been, of course, you know, going up and up, so even my points that seem super high are not that high at this point. He doesn't even have, like, you know, empowered champions, so it's not that scary yet, at least. Y yesterday I had multiple battles where, you know, all of their champions are plus four and they have, you know, multiple plus four mythicals and so on, so just having a normal Harima that, that isn't even empowered kind of almost looks weak in comparison to those teams. There's so big disparity between accounts. There's much better accounts than, you know, than this and then, but this is obviously still a top level account, but <laughs> there's like uh, accounts in live arena that just come with full teams of plus four and like including new champions like they have new primals that have, have been released this year and they already have them at plus four okay our base mm, i guess we'll go with the mikage for buff strip then Hmm. We could almost go with. Uh, now maybe, maybe we'll go with Mikage and Wukong, and then we'll ban the Harima. I think that's what we'll do. I was thinking I could maybe go with Helicat and Rotos and ban the Yumeko, but that leaves him. A lot of options he could still you know um pick his own wukong or lazarus or there's quite many nukers these days that can deal with helicat oh he went with trotos himself Mm, yeah, the Rodos is kind of scary here because we're not gonna have, you know, UDK or anything like that, and we're gonna get locked out, but yeah, we kind of have to do it. I don't think he expected me to do what I did because he went for the Armand span. If he knew I was not gonna ban the Yumeko, he probably would have banned something else. a little bit too big. <laughs> okay, protec protection see if that obviously was, you know, faster than my slow Mikage. Mm, 
Okay, let's see. Can we remove any of the stone skin? No, nothing. <laughs> nothing, and we got polymorph. Okay, at least he got um, a non crit on Noraces. But you know, we don't have Angora, and we're locked out, so we're not instantly gonna do anything on him. I'm more expecting. Expecting Wukong to do something in this battle than Narses. Oh, and he got the stone skin extended. That that's so annoying that when our base does the stone skin from her own skills, it's one turn, but that stone skin can be extended. Even though you can't extend stone skin buff with the skills and you can't have the masteries extend the stone skin set, but you can extend the one from skills. Mm. Kind of looking bad. <laughs> Probably we lost this one already. He's getting the turn meter boost and um, both like increased speed, uh, uh, like um, in increased speed buff, and then we're also getting the decreased speed debuff. And I, I don't like Yumeko is gonna lap us super hard. May maybe I should have gone with Ankara instead of Dartsus. Then I would have had. A chance, but I kind of, you know, picked early on Dutchess just to have Polymorph against the Harima. I didn't do I was actually gonna go for the Harima ban. Yeah, it, it was my mistake. I would have had the chance to win with Angora. I wish I didn't go for a 6 star blessing on Dutchess because you know I have cried about it many times but that's like 8 months worth of farming it would have been so better if like if that update came a little bit before and I didn't go for Dutchess and went for Ankara instead. But it's too late to change it now. Okay yeah. We got locked out before we actually got <laughs> got to use any skills on Wukong. I don't even have UDK in this battle. Mm, yeah, I mean, like, you know, there could have been a small chance if, you know, the master is from Wukong reduced his cooldowns, but really the, the best chance I could have had to win that one would have been with uh, Angora A1. But... Oh, it's the same guy. Okay, this time we're definitely gonna go, <laughs> go with the Angora then. Though, I don't know if we're gonna go for the same matchup, so... It, we will see, but... Okay, and this time he even got the Narses, so... We need the... Angora even more badly. I mean, uh, the other ones. <laughs> Not Narses. But yeah, this is kind of how it often is in live arena that you get battles with the same same accounts multiple times. I feel like this account would not have been that hard to deal with just a while ago before the muticals, but now the meta has kind of shifted and Necret and um, Helicat are both a lot worse than they used to be, but. With those, I feel like this would be more doable. Should 
Should I go with Staldos this time? No, like, he's gonna get the, you know... He's gonna go with, um... Hmm. Yeah, like, I guess he can only pick one of them. He's gonna pick either our base or Lockout and Nuka. Might as well go with the Rotos. Yeah, because most likely, if I... He might go with our base now, but if I would have picked Stalos, he would definitely go with the Yumeka, so... At least we'll have more Polymorph this time. Or not, not more, but Rodos is gonna have it. Well, depends what Nugger he pick. I might even go with Necret in this battle. It's not... I mean, it's totally perfectly viable against Harima. It's just no, not against many of the other things. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was expecting our base. I guess we'll go with UDK, but you know, it's not gonna last us that long. Is he gonna ban it? I mean, I feel like he's probably gonna ban it, to be honest, anyway. Oh, he went for the... yeah. I mean, that makes sense since he has the R base, but obviously we have a chance to polymorph both R base and Harima, and if, like, if those happens, we can still win. I mean, and he's not using lockout this time, so... that That's not the only way to win with Angora A1 proc, even though, you know, Narciss is my by far the best Nougar at this point. Ah, okay, that's, you know, super unlucky. Both times he got the stone skin extended and he stole my stone skins and everything. <laughs> that, that couldn't have gone any worse at all. Okay, that's good at least. Ah, well, we got polymorph last time too, but this time we at least actually got rid of some of the buffs on the team. Nah, are we? I don't think we're even gonna get a revive off against him, are we? Yeah, we're not even gonna get the revive off. I mean, I guess he could weak it, but that—that's about it. I need a weak hit here or I'm already lost. Oh, what? Oh, he went for that, okay. Wait, didn't he have A3 ready or did I miss that? Ah, I thought Angora was gonna go before Harima, okay, we lost. Speed, uh... <laughs> Speed buff is too OP. You know, the 30% actually is a pretty big deal. Even though Sifi is not as um, meta right now in classic arena defense as it used to be. You know, it used to be every single team. Now it's only a couple of teams out of top 30, but it's still one of the best things in live arena. But yeah, I mean, that wasn't even the, you know, by by far we can meet much 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 harder teams than that one. But 
in those both battles, since he's using like full speed teams both times, basically the win condition every time is some kind of uh, RNG with, you know, Polymorph or Ankara A1 procs and so on. <laughs> so it's like, you know, we can win those battles, but it's not, uh, it's less likely than not that we'll win. Which sucks, I wish, you know, there was something I could do about it, but I don't think there really is. He's picking multiple Yeah, Spirit Affinity Champions, meaning that they can weak hit on Rotos and Ankara. That's that's one way that we might be able to beat this team. And he doesn't have six star blessing on Gizmark, which is actually pretty big deal since it reduces the turn meter. I think um I have to double check because, you know, I don't use that blessing, but I think it's way worse 4 star. You need to have it 6 star for for the 10 meter decrease, I think. And funny thing is that I have, at this point, I have already seen many accounts with plus 4 Gizmark. I think on the last video, <laughs> there was somebody with plus 4 Gizmark that was uh, hitting very hard, even even with the A1. Like the, the A1 on the second form doesn't have super high multiplier and I think it has a weird condition that was it like if two or more champions in the enemy team are less than 50% HP then it's gonna be AOE skill. Something weird like that and that thing, <laughs> that thing got me in that battle. But you know, he does decrease defense and gets extra turn on kill so you know that's that's pretty tough to deal with yeah we're not faring super well <laughs> all of the battles so far are basically beating us before we ever get the turn Oh fuck, I... Uh. Anyway, I don't think that mattered, I think we're gonna die before it, but you know, that that was a mistake. Oh, he got the cooldowns reset on, uh, okay, on Gizmog. Wait, do, yeah, 3-0, not, not the best start. I'm looking at Reddit and people are talking about um, the Mitral event. I don't know, or not the Mitral event, but they're talking about Mitral. I don't know what you guys think about the Mitral event. I wish when they do the uh, Champion Blessing events, they would actually do it 6 star sometimes. I'm pretty sure they never did it 6 star. No, no, they, they have done it. Usually, usually it's 5 star. I wish it was 6 star and not 5 star. Wait, have they done... No, no, I don't think they have ever done 6 star. They either do 4 star or 5 star. But Mitral is so, you know, outdated that champion at this point. Sure, you can, you know, use it on Hydra. Not the best thing in the game, but it's usable. 
uh, I never see anybody use Mitrala in Arena anymore. Seeds exploit. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. I am not exactly sure how big defense that actually will make, but we'll see. I'm sure. I'm sure Parium will <laughs> will fix it if there's a big bug like that. Even if they didn't say anything about it yet, but this is the first time I hear about it. Oh, he went with the white duo. It's kind of risky at this point because um, unless I ban the Narcissus I can't use Duchess and that's not good. This is why I need to get um, what was her name. I always mod, yeah I always keep forgetting that. <laughs> forgetting her name even though it's so simple, yeah I need to get mod then I would have a reviver for these situations. Am I really gonna go with Stalos? <laughs> Wukong is no good against Stalos, I can't pick Wukong. Mm, yeah, I, I guess I'll have to go with Stalos. There's no other choice, I can't just ban the Krixia, sadly. Oh wait, he he didn't ban Armands, maybe I should have... I definitely should have banned Krixia then, I didn't expect him to not ban the Armands. Well, we can still get weak hit. Oh, he's even slow, never mind. He's not faster than me on the Krixia. I guess we'll play it safe and polymorph the Taros. Okay, that was that was kind of our best possible start that we could have against the, this team. Not only did I go first on my Armands, but he resisted Grixia and Grixia got polymorphed. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the <laughs> be the first win of the day. Well, we'll see about that. I'm still using Staldus as the nuker, so maybe it isn't as simple as I want it to be. But we do have Armands in the team, so how how bad can um, can Staldus be? Surely we can get a finish against the team with uh, Armands. Oh, I probably should should have hit uh, Taras with um, UDK one, but I guess it doesn't matter yet. But his team isn't exactly speed team, even though it has Krixia. Yeah. Probably on the on the long run, the Krixia lockout might still get uh, get us though. And if I'm gonna re revise either Rixia or Taras, they're gonna have their <laughs> their cooldowns back. Oh fuck. Okay, I need to kill. Yeah, I need to kill Taras before it gets a turn.
Mm, damn. The ma married squishy. <laughs> married squishy eagles are, are strong if you don't have some ultra nuker. Yeah, his marriage guy is not even that tanky, but the shield and the heals are keeping him up pretty well. Yeah, I, I don't know if we are still safe yet. Even, even though we're kind of controlling the fight so far, but I think. It, if he just gets the lockout at the right time, it might, um, that might be it. I mean, if he gets the buffs out there, he can literally kill everybody in my team in one hit, including Duchess, maybe kind of depending how good gear he has on, um, on Taras, but he can get a lot of buffs up on this team. Yeah, let's, let's just save the polymorph. Yeah, I don't think I should use any skills on the Armands at this point. I don't think he's gonna use skills either, other than maybe on Krixia. I'm sure if he gets the... Oh, he's using it. That's kind of weird, because, you know, obviously I can style this as long as I want. Yeah, he, he can't kill me right now, and he cannot revive, so if he gets me locked out, I can just, you know, A1 the Krixia and not kill the marriage scar until I'm ready to do it. But as you can see, it's kind of hard to kill Maritska even by herself if uh, with Saldos. Nah. Well, to be honest, we're kind of gonna heal the team full if he keeps stalling, and I really, um, I don't need to use my skills on Armands. I want to have all of those intact for later. Mm -hmm. Should I go for a point? Okay, let's do it. We're not gonna kill the Maritzka instantly anyway. He he's stalling, so we might as well take our Take our time as well and do this um, as safely as we can. Yeah, let's get everybody to everybody to full health before Angora and Taras come back. Oh, he healed with ah. Uh, okay, yeah. I think he's... No, he's not. Okay. I wish we could kill it before Stardust takes a turn, but okay, that, that's not gonna happen. But, you know, Armand is gonna go right away, so we're, we're good. I'm pretty sure this guy doesn't doesn't have the best gear. His Krixia is very slow, <laughs> slower than slower than my Armands, which is kind of unusual. Oh wait, this is gonna lock us out. He's slower than my Armands, which is kind of unusual. And okay, we're good. Uh, so this team kind of looked scarier on paper than it was on practice, but th this could have been with the same champions very one-sided the other way around 
And to be fair, he got some weak hits. Uh, he, he got weak hit on the Armands at the start. And that was good, though I don't know if it even mattered since we went first anyway. But that's how big difference it makes to go first. This guy didn't really get to do anything with Taras, and that's what happened to me in the other battles. Okay, we're 1 and 3, so let's get 5 wins in row. Why do you actually play raid? What motivates you to log in every day? Honestly, for me at this point, you know, I have played the game for many years, so it's kind of, you know, habit at this point. Um, it used to be that I was, you know, trying to compete in arena and I was trying to outdo myself and get new records, but right now it seems kind of bleak on that front. If you don't take Raid too seriously, you can totally play it casually on the side, even if it takes a lot of time, but you, you don't always have to build new teams and put that kind of thought and effort into it. You can just grind the daily stuff while, while you're doing other stuff in real life, and you know, you don't always have to be super active in this game. I feel like there's some people who do who do that, and then there's some people who just basically quit the game. If that happens, I think it's better to just um, not go at uh, at two hundred percent all the time. Why is nobody discussing the Serpent Titan event? I mean, I guess we just talked about it, but it's not... It's a 5-star blessing. Blessing on champion that isn't that meta. L let's see what this guy says. I'm shocked I didn't see a single post on the first page discussing this. I'm 100 times more invested in getting 5-star soul for Mitrala than the current user. Might be the best free champion everyone gets eventually. Usable pretty much everywhere. I don't think it's anything to scoff at, ev even if you got 3 or 4. Um, I don't think so. I think she used to be super good when um, when she was new. I don't think she is, you know, one of the top 3 champions. I mean, even if we don't talk about fusions, you know, obviously, stuff like Armands and Angora and Rodos and so on are a lot better at this time. Wait, okay, let, we'll go with Ankara and uh, Rotos, yeah. So, even outside of those, if we just compare it to the other, other Cornerstone champions that you can always get, I would definitely say that Arbiter and um, at least Arbiter and um, Marius, probably Mit Mitra too, I think they're. Uh, I mean, Lydia, I think they're all probably better than Mitrala, but... Like me personally, I'm not really using Mitrala in anything at this point, sadly. Let's go for the Geese Mark Man. I kind of thought about the Sifi for a second, but not now. Ah, fuck. Yeah, because the Gizma can kill us through stone skin, but he didn't ban the Armands, right? I should have banned the Greeks, yeah. Quite many people are banning, not banning Armands today, but it's on matchups where, you know, I didn't, I didn't ban their lockout. What? What? Why? Okay, we're, we're getting the battle. Well, we're gonna still get the weak hit. That's kind of 
good part about the Crixia versus Armands, Rodos and Angora matchup. Okay, we, we didn't know. Oh, and, and he removed the stone skin on UDK. I mean, on everyone, but on the UDK, it's the worst. Bo both Angora and UDK. Okay, let's see if we can get get proc on the Angkor A1. That's kind of, you know, the win condition in many of these battles where I... Ah, where I go second. Okay, we didn't. I guess that kind of seals the deal. If we if we did get it and I got uh, basically either one of those skills, I, we would have uh, won the battle at that point. Even the A3 would have been good because we could have gotten block revive, but now I think it's game over. Surely. Lock out this OP, what can I say? We, we got stone skin and stuff, but we need we need new countermeasures against speed teams. Speed teams are running rampant again. Okay, can we get A1 proc this time? No, oh, okay. That's kind of unlucky. We didn't get it um, two times in a row. Okay, this time I don't think we should even hit the kill the Wukong. Though I would get the... Um, Healer streak and whirlwind of that. Maybe I'll do it anyway. Yeah, it's not super high turn meter, so and it doesn't have like attack buff, so we didn't really have to do it, but let's do it. So close. If I could have done the A2 there. <laughs> Then we would have been good. <laughs> Grixia is gonna get the lockout back, so we need to hurry up. But I feel like we we, we have another chance. I don't think Wukong is gonna kill us with the A1. Maybe he can with the attack buff. Maybe he can kill Narcissus. Let's see. I feel like he he can't, but it's gonna be close. Oh, he didn't even go for it. Okay. I think we're gonna get locked out in a second. I think we need to go for a revive actually, and not not hold on to it like I usually would. Let's go for Arman's uh, revive. Uh, can we kill the revivers? I hope, but I'm not sure. Ah, uh, Arbiter didn't die. That, that sucks. He still has, you know, double turn meter boost, so he's still gonna go, go before us. I think Wukong has the A2 at this point, so I, I think it's game over, basically. Yeah. Can I can I survive one more turn? If I if I I feel, I feel like this battle we probably would have if we if we run this like ten times I feel like I will I will win it more than fifty percent. It's kind of unlucky, but if I can survive one more turn, I think we can still win it though. Can I actually? 
No, I'm gonna... yeah. I think we're good. Are we actually good? He can't lock, out, lock us out now. He doesn't have any life harvest, right? Yeah, he doesn't. Even if we can't block revive the Wukong, I think we will kill everybody this time. So I think we did win it, right? Surely. Yeah. Oh, Krik <laughs> this time Grixia didn't die, but Arbiter did. But okay, that, that's better. We barely won it. It's, you know, a little bit um, frustrating because it clearly wasn't the, wasn't the strongest teams. But it's, you know, my weakness that I'm slow and... Lockout is kind of dominating this meta. And by the way, we're getting more and more lockout champions. I guess there's multiple new lockout champions as well. The the demon spawn one is kind of interesting. I I was being a little bit inactive, I should have made a video about it, but he does have um on the on the first form he has it's kind of the wrong like if the forms were switched this champion would be way better but it has a single target lockout on this skill and then this one is basically kind of similar to Grixia that it's like a buff strip and then or like a Galatir that it's buff strip and then block active skills debuff so basically a lockout but this is the first form so if he gets locked out he's not going to be able to use the skills and on the second form he has bombs but he's HP scaling champions, so they're not gonna hit that high, and his multipliers overall are not super good. I think that's that's the issue with him. If the forms were switched around, he would be much better champion. I hope I don't get him to be honest, and though he looks kind of good, but you know, you still it's. I mean, just having lockout by itself is of course great. But having something like Galatir or Krixia is, you know, much better because you can use the ability seven if you go second. Okay, so let me think about it. Probably he can still be like, you know, one support or UDK and R base and Nuker. Do I even want to go with. Let's pick another support. Let's not even go for the second Nuker just yet. Maybe I should actually go with Necret. I feel like every time I pick Necret, I regret him, but let's see how he does this battle. At least we would have some kills about against the Gizmok. Okay, let's actually go with the Wukong instead of Rodos. It's kind of funny to protect... Um... Oh, he banned Wukong. <laughs> I was gonna say it's kind of funny to protect Wukong with uh, Necret, but we will still get the Ballaster and obviously we can do other um, other A3s as long as we get any turns. He still does have like <laughs> big fat HP stat with Ballaster set. It's very good in certain matchups, but not super uh, good in the current meta, sadly, and I used to re rely a lot on my bolster sets and Necret. It's one of the reasons like, why I feel like I have a much harder time right now than just a couple months ago. Even though Taras is not as good as it used to be. I mean, he's as good as he used to be, but there's a counter to him. I don't think I can kill anybody with the A3, so we're just 
gonna go for the A2. They, they had a lot of buffs, but Geese marked the only one that I could have killed. Um, they didn't have three buffs on him. Okay, this time we at least didn't get the get the two turn stone skin. I'm kind of surprised that he went with the Leorios. I think um, in this matchup our like our double bolster and double reviver was definitely helpful. He still has attack buff though, so I think we can survive it, but Dutch is gonna be low. I think both Necret and... oh, he doesn't... okay. Never mind. Ah, oh, fuck. We got slept. That's not... that's not good. And he's rot <laughs> he's rotating those Thorn buffs, so we're not really able to do a lot on Narsus. Ah, and now, now we, we hit Gizmark, we're just gonna die, but... I guess we have to do it. At least then he can't um, sleep Dutchess as easily. Ah, uh, is is Sifi gonna go again just before Dutchess? Dude, just let me let me get this one revival off. Ah, uh, wait, wait. Is a one is gonna hit both? Yeah, okay. But no, oh, that that wasn't a one. Okay, I guess we lost. Dude, he gets so he gets so many. How many turns did Kismak do? Like five turns in a row there. Four turns. That's that's kind of funny. Uh, did we really lose it? I thought this one was almost winnable. Uh, he's so he's so much faster with the. Uh, speed buffs and the turn meter boost that he's just, you know, out, um, he's lap lapping me so hard, that that's that was the big issue, and I guess, did he have, um, yeah, he had 6 star blessing on Gizmog, and that's kind of what I was th talking about before, let's double check, but I don't think you get the turn meter decrease wi without 6 star, uh, which, it's, Surely it was... oh, okay, it, it's Chaos. Yeah, it's only from 6 star. You get the damage increase from 5 star, but it only really gets super OP at 6 star. Anyway, we have been getting beat a lot today, so... Nothing new. By the way, with, I'll show it in a second. Oh, Frawley, interesting. I feel like the Necrot was actually kind of good pick in the last battle, but it just wasn't good enough. Could we maybe use it again in this one? He still has to pick one Nogar, so there's not gonna be R-Base or UDK. I could go with Necrot and Rothos. 
which used to be my old go to team comp. They are super good together, as long as they are not countered. Okay, we're getting a little bit on the spicy political te territory, but I don't know what you guys think about this. I'm just gonna show the <laughs> headline. But if you're a, like, if you're at all familiar with uh, Destiny or Kick, like you, Destiny is like a political streamer, and a lot of people hate him. I think he's generally, I think he's generally kind of uh, better than average, but sometimes he has you know <laughs> horrible things on things, but. Wait, am I even gonna ban the Greeks? I think we should still ban it. But so it's funny that he's banned on kick because you know th this is very you know hyper political. So you might not even know who he is. He's like a streamer who makes political content, and I would say he's kind of you know center right. But I think <laughs> I think in U.S. he's considered left. But he's kind of you know let's say he's like a centrist. He's not he's not super left, but on the, on some issues like on cultural cultural issues is kind of on the left but on some other issues he's not that left he's pretty like centrist or even center right but he's always making making it like he's you know old school internet person so he is super spicy and you know he makes a lot of uh, comments that people would be offended by i don't think we can we could almost maybe block about the city but i don't think we can do it but yeah, so he, he does make comments that he gets into hot water by doing them. If I just now do... yeah, let's do it. But then, then he's kind of, also kind of playing both sides on this one, which I don't like because I feel like he's better than that. But you know, he gives other people crap when they also make those spicy comments. And then he keeps making fun of people. Like, Kiki is basically a, an alternative website to Twitch. And a lot of people that um, do like political content or do some kind of super spicy things and got banned from Twitch, a lot of those people stream on Kick instead of Twitch. And he's always making fun of the people who are on Kick. And now he's actually banned on Kick, which is kind of, you know, kind of funny. Prob probably almost nobody in the audience is gonna understand why, why I think it's super funny, funny this headline. But uh, those who those who know, they they will know. I think I think people have spoken about Destiny a couple times on my Discord. I don't think really anybody was super big fan of him. I was kind of half defending him. I think people both on the left and and right didn't like him actually. But if you didn't know, he made some, you know, not, not to get super. Uh, super into into the parties and politics but he made something i don't recall what he exactly said but he said something like the the, the trump trump shooter should have practiced his uh aiming or something like that you know which is super spicy and people are gonna get offended by i don't you know i don't think he i think he was trying to be spicy i don't think he really means it i mean he obviously wouldn't do anything himself but you know the way it is and I feel like he often supports this kind of stuff that like, you know, getting mad about people making some comments. Now he's getting super into hot water about it. Anyway, let's not talk about the, the Trump drama too much, but that was just super funny headline. I, I had to bring it up. Okay, yeah, let's just um, go with the same set. I'll go, go with both Duchess and Ankara, not them and try to get any pol polymorph early on. And probably I'll pick Rotos and UDK as the last two, assuming he lets me. Ah, uh, Harima. I think we're gonna go for the Harima ban. But yeah, I will say I'm kind of, you know, super on the side of the freedom of speech. I don't think most people are nowadays. I don't think too many people are on it. I feel like you should really must be allowed to say anything on internet other than like direct threats. And even, even if you make a direct threat, I feel like even in those cases, 
like you can use common sense you, you know somebody can make a direct threat in video game and it's not anything and nobody should be worried about that somebody can make a sarcastic point or whatever i, I don't think even if you like technically literally say a direct threat i don't think even those are issue like all the time but uh, i don't think hardly anybody is defending that and you know <laughs> That kind of spicy content is not uh, not in the favor anymore. I'm not really super offended. When I was like, you know, 10 years old and I was playing RuneScape, people were saying all kinds of things that nobody will say these days. So it doesn't really, <laughs> it doesn't scare me. I, I, I used to be in, in a clan um, in RuneScape and our leader was a... Uh, black american guy called muhammad and he he was you know making all kinds of racial jokes that that wouldn't wouldn't fly these days ah the, the, this guy is like the new i don't re recall his name but he's like new duchess um yeah he, he's like a reviver with his force affinity. Ah. I didn't get weak hit, I should have gone for A3. It definitely would have died. I was kind of trying to play it safe. I, I shouldn't have. Oh, nice. Two non-weak hits in row. I guess that um, is totally, totally plausible, but usually it doesn't go that well for me. Oh, he doesn't have any life harvest. Interesting. Uh, I don't know. Oh, we didn't kill it. Ah, we definitely didn't get the proc. I don't know. Even if we killed it, we would have got, gotten Maritska and Krixia. I think we might have lost even in that instance. This is kind of tricky team because he basically has triple reviver plus Krixia. And we can't... Uh, maybe I should have gone for the... Siegfried earlier, but I can't kill it in one turn. It's just gonna negate the hit and get the block damage. Yeah, I probably should have tried to kill him before. Like, if I do the A2 now, I'm not gonna steal HP. That's kind of why I didn't really go for him, but it's kind of too late now. Maybe we can proc the passive with UDK or Angora. Even if I do the A... Yeah, okay, good. Even if I do... Wait. Oh, he gets extra turn from that. Ah, oh, fuck. Now we're screwed. Yeah, even if I kill him with A3... Uh, before proccing his passive... They, it's not gonna die from it. It's gonna negate it, which is kind of bad, because... Against Leorios, for instance... Um, Rotos could be able to... I think he's gonna go before me. I think we're done. Yeah. It would work against Leorio's passive, but not against Siegfried. Now we can kill it though, if we survive, but I think... No, okay, he's... Yeah, okay. He didn't do the A1, but we were like, I guess slightly... Okay, fuck. We were slightly above 50% and we would have survived it with Rodos, but of course we got unlucky with the Maritska A1. Okay, now we, now we lost it. If that Maritska A1 didn't get... Rodos, I think we would have won, or didn't didn't uh, proc to seek from instead of anybody else in the team. I think we would have been good at that point. Anyway, but yeah, there's a lot of like a lot of weird stuff in the global news and politics right now. Like not not just talking about the Trump drama, which of course you know I condemn, but. Um, I've spoken about it before, but there's this like YouTuber who's 24, 
in Europe that got elected to the European Parliament just recently. And he, he keeps making TikTok videos about uh, EU. I think it's super funny. I think some other people are not big fan of it, but I think uh, the TikTok videos he made are kind of super plain right now, but he didn't do anything bad actually. I'm kind of having having fun following following those kind of weird uh, political happenings right now. I don't really I don't really watch sports. I I know it's kind of bad thing to say, and you know some people are not not gonna be happy with it. But for me, politics is kind of like my sports. I I don't watch football games. I don't watch ice hockey, but I do watch. Uh, political debates and I follow the global news and so on. I think I showed it once before on video, but if you're interested about the YouTuber voice in the EU Parliament, go check out Fidias on, I guess, basically any social media. I don't, I don't think YouTube is even his main channel anymore. I think he's mostly a TikToker, but he does have a, a very large YouTube channel as well. Mm, I think we're actually gonna go with the Mika game instead of Duchess, yeah. To try reduce the Taras AoE damage. I don't know if, if he misclicked there, but I'm a little bit surprised that he banned the Rotos considering that he had the R base. Maybe he was meant to ban Narsus, I feel like. Anyway. The battles are going so bad that I'm getting distracted by news and politics. By the way, I, okay, now, now that we already talked about it, I am kind of curious about Destiny. So, if anybody knows him, what do you, what do you think about him? Like, do you, um, do you weave Destiny, like, positively or negatively, if you are familiar with him? And I expect that probably a lot of people are not, but if you are, then let me know in the comments if you like him or dislike him. I feel like he's kind of right now i think he's honestly i feel like he's one of the more uh the better voices on politics especially on like social media but when he gets things like wrong when he has bad takes he has like super super bad takes i think normally he's like better than most people and more reasonable but i feel like n nobody nobody appreciates him at this point It's kind of hard to hard to defend when he keeps making like saying some really really like divisive stuff that nobody nobody agrees with. It's kind of like uh, similar to Bill Maher. I don't know if you guys know him, but he's an old guy on TV that has been making political like uh, like videos or um, TV shows for like decades. He used to have like a TV show called Politically Incorrect, like 30 years ago or something crazy like that. He's kind of similar to me, like Destiny, that generally I think he's reasonable and more um, more honest and fair than al almost anybody in politics. But then on some issues, he's just very like uh, he knows better than that and he's not being rational. And <laughs> that's why like it takes a lot of um, a lot of people that otherwise would consider him like a good uh, good actor in that scene, like don't really consider him good. Anyway, now you now you know if you didn't already know that politics is my my football. 
I don't know if that's a good thing. That's probably not a good thing because I'm not trying to make mockery out of politics or global news. But they, you know, the, the politic politicians they kind of make it themselves like a like a sport. Es especially if we talk about you know the U.S. party politics, which has been in the gl global news a lot lately. But just in general, it's very you know, <laughs> it's basically like a sport. And I'm one of those people that I don't really, you know, I don't, I don't have a team that I root for. I, I I would want there to be a team that I could root for, but there is no team for me, at least not right now. And I'm just enjoying the game. I'm not really that invested. I mean, I'm invested on some issues, but I'm not invested on like specific people or parties. And I'm just enjoying the game, let's say. It, it's the same in Finland, like in Finnish local politics. I pretty much vote for a different party every 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 other election. I don't have a spe specific party that I support, even though there is quite many parties in Finland. It, it's not the same way as in US. Okay, today we're mostly going with Ankara and Narsis actually, and I'm not really picking Mikake and Dutchess every time. Early on, it's kind of new development. Though Dutchess might be good here. Like, he has a lot of debuffs, so Polymorph wouldn't be bad at all. Also, Necret would actually maybe be good too. Should I go with Necret? I wonder what his last pick with Chu Chen, something like Lazarus would make a lot of sense as the last pick though. We might actually go with Necret again. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna do this. I mean, he does have boss trip, he could remove some of the shields, but um, I'm not sure if we're gonna ban a Quixie or not. Oh, Gizmok, okay. In that case, I think we should actually go for the Grixia Bang. Yeah, let's do it. You know, I always go for the Ankara Rotos to try to counter Grixia. But usually, you know, they have Armands or something else and I end up not banning her either because there's like um, I ban another risk and then I gamble on getting weak hit. But this time we actually didn't really need to ban anybody else. I mean, banning something like Sifi would have been good too, of course. But you know he already has um, Chu Chen, so he's gonna go first regardless. Wait, he didn't ban Armands. I mean, I don't think there's any way that we can lose it at this point. Even though this guy is like uh, much higher rated than us. Yeah, if we actually get to do a turn on Nuker and Armands, there's no way we can lose at this point. Which one? I think we're gonna polymorph one of the Nukers, but which one? Can I kill the if I might... Yeah, I probably won't one-shot it though. Maybe. Okay, I did. <laughs> Not even close. 116k. I, I forget that I got the 4-star blessing just a couple days ago. And his damage is way higher than it used to be. Are we actually starting to gain a point? I feel like now when I was distracted and I was just rambling about politics, we're actually getting some wins. And <laughs> At the start we were we were not. And it's not like these enemies are weak. I feel like every enemy is uh, is super scary.
But by the way, here are some funny statistics. N not funny, okay, to be clear, this is not funny, but just uh, since we were talking about politics, just to bring it up in context, like, you know, like obviously the big thing that right now everybody is talking about globally, not just the US, but, um, well, n not just the incident that happened with Trump, but just even before it, you know, the clash be between Trump and Biden. Biden has approval rating of 37% right now, I'm looking at it, and guess what, um, I'd, I don't think there's any, I was looking at, bef at it before, there's no polls about our new president yet, because he was just elected, but our pre previous president had approval rating of 91%, it's almost triple, triple what the US presidents have, so I think that kind of says a lot about the fact that our, like the Finnish local political scene is a lot calmer in comparison to the US, even though it's, you know, I don't think it's, it, it's not like it doesn't get hectic, but compared to what happens in US, it's nothing like that. But I feel like it's kind of shocking that there can be so big swings between countries, you would think that they would be kind of similar, similar at least. Fuck. Let's go with this. I'm probably gonna go with uh, Stalos as the last last um, nuker. I'm, I was kind of peeking on the last second, but I, I knew what I was gonna do. I was just getting distracted, but I already, already decided to go with those. The Rotos is gonna be the issue here. I wish um, I could ban it, but I I can't. Maybe I could have gone with Necrot instead of Dartsus, but even that I don't think, you know... It wouldn't hold Rodos back super long. By, by the way, okay, if, if, we, if we're still talking about politics, um, like, here's a good example. So the last Finnish president, who has approval rating of 91%, to be clear, I never voted for the guy. I don't hate him. I think he's totally fine and is, like, good, good rep representation of Finland. And I think that's how most people feel, like, in Finland. I, I guess that's the difference between us and US. I never voted for him. I kind of thought about voting for him in the second time, but uh, it's not that, <laughs> it's not, um, my my life isn't ruined if he gets elected as president, and I feel like he actually was pretty good president, to be fair, so. I think we're still gonna go for the A2 and not the A3. Maybe I could kill Harima, but I'm not even certain that I can. Oh my god. I thought, okay, I thought we would do more damage on Rotos, but Harima passive combined with all of the, um, the buffs and um, the bone armor, Rotos barely took any damage from the A2. Uh, oh, I guess, I guess we ate one of the Rotos A2s to be fair, so that mitigate, mitigated the damage as well. Oh, we survived it, nice. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think Rotos has the A3 back yet. Okay, this is super close, but maybe we can do it. Oh, we have the A2, oh, I didn't think about that. Wait, now we can surely kill it with the A3, and we have Ankara in team, so we're gonna get a double turn. 
Yeah, even if we don't block revive it, but now we can do the A2 without the passive and we won. Okay, nice. And like I said, even, even though for me, you know, like uh, politics is kind of the sport that I follow, I also have very tra very bad track record with my voting. Basically, nobody that I ever vote for gets elected. And my dad keeps kind of telling to me recently that uh, I should I should go for the winner instead of just voting who I feel like because my I'm wasting my vote and. I kind of, oh my god, I kind of feel like that way sometimes too, but I don't know if, uh, wait, surely, surely status is not going to one versus for us. I don't think just voting for the winner wives well in my, uh, in my head either. I, I guess, yeah, our damage after all of the hell lost is a lot less. It doesn't really wipe, wipe with me that I would, uh, on purpose, vote for people that I'm not, like, agreeing with. But since I keep voting my personal opinions, none of those uh, people ever get elected. Because I I often tend to vote for super fringe uh, candidates and parties and not the, not the big ones. There's always, like, you know, new parties every couple of years. And I often tend to vote for those new parties because they often have people that are saying things that um, you know are not uh, are not like you know they're kind of being uh, different than the than the big parties. I don't know if we can beat this guy. I think I think his fatalist is <laughs> is literally going to one versus for us. I guess the big deal is um, how well can my uncle survive? But I think we'll yeah we lost it. His, his Fatalis is literally one versus fouring us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so somebody sent this clip to Doc. He he needs to see this clip, but yeah. We killed everybody else, we couldn't four versus one the Fatalis. That is kind of funny, but happens. And to be fair, you know, obviously Stalos is a, a horrible nuker. He's not really used by anybody normally. So he wasn't really able to break the shield. And Narcissus has like lost half of his health or 60% of his health or something like that. So he wasn't really doing a lot of damage either. Maybe I should have revived the Duchess the second time instead of Staldos. Now thinking about it afterwards. Maybe I could have won it that way. But <laughs> happens. I was going in for the win. <laughs> we're, we're against Timo from IPR. He, he was telling me some interesting stuff recently, but um, I'm not even going to talk about that on video, I think. Anyway. I don't think we can we can beat Timo, but... <laughs> well, I, I don't think we can even put, put up a, a fight for him, though, to be fair. I would want to try to put put up put up a fight, but I don't think we can do it. <laughs> I think he's gonna destroy us. Actually, it doesn't I mean it's not that heavily empowered, it's just one CF that is plus four. But he does have a you know six star blessing on everybody, and we know that his pills are gonna be good. So I don't I think this is gonna be the hardest battle of the day. Let me think about it. He he did open with triple support though, so we could just go with Duchess and Rotos. That way we'll get two polymorphs, my my only two two champions on my account with six star blessing. We can pick both of those and we don't have to worry about UDK or our base. Not unless he has some nuker Kalatir that some people have been telling me about that I have never seen in in the wild. Okay, it's, it's not, obviously. Hmm. I'm almost tempted to go with UDK 
Anyway, both of those are magic affinity nukers. <laughs> Should I go with Staldus? Uh, it would be kind of funny to go with Staldus. Should I go... Yeah, let, let's do this. Let's, let's YOLO this one. Basically, I think in the perfect scenario, we have kind of higher chance. I, like, I think our chance to win is super low. But I think with triple nuker, we actually have the highest chance to win, which is super low. If we get, you know, like polymorph on the Galatir um, and weak hits from the nuker, the nukers, Staldos could be pretty good here. But he still has double reviver, so even if we get to take a turn on Staldos, that's not the. <laughs> That's not game over yet. Damn. Yeah, he, he's lapping me. He's taking multiple, multiple turns before I get my first one. Wait, does he have life harvest? Probably. Yeah, probably not. I didn't. I didn't expect him to do it because usually people are not running life harvest if they have six star blessing. Okay, if Galatir gets polymorphed here. We are not. We actually could win this one, but we really need to get polymorph. Okay, of course, of course not. If he got polymorph there, I think we would have literally been able to win against Timo. <laughs> but now we lost. Now, now there's nothing that we can do about this. And since he banned the Rotos, we only had one champion with polymorph, so obviously it wasn't guaranteed. It would have been good for the video to win against him. It was kind of close. Now, now I feel a little bit sad about it. Wait, how did he get the get the nuke back already? Did he get the refresh proc? I didn't. Uh, I missed that one. I don't think he. Did he take that many turns? Anyway, it was kind of closer than I thought it could be, so we'll take it. Yeah, now that I'm looking at my YouTube feed, I'm constantly <laughs> seeing videos now from different people ab about the same Destiny thing that I was talking about a while ago. I guess it's big on the news right now. Like, I, I don't think he, him making like stupid uh, jokes on Twitter, I don't think that's the issue, but from what I saw, he was kind of defending it afterwards and <laughs> he, he was trying to argue about it. And I think on that one, he got kind of uh, lost a lot of people. I 
I am looking at my YouTube feed and it's only videos about uh, UFC and Destiny. I guess that's you, you, um, UFC, Destiny and Elden Ring. I, I guess that's what I have been watching on YouTube lately and cat videos. <laughs> UFC, UFC politics, cat videos and uh, what was the other one? Yeah, <laughs> UFC politics and cat videos and Elden Ring. That, that seems about right for me. I haven't been watching fishing videos lately. Usually my feed, feed is full of fishing videos, but not today. I'm almost tempted, to be honest, to go for the support Wukong. Maybe I should do it again. Even, even though I feel like the new Wukong is great, I don't think it's super... Um, I'm having super hard time using him, him in this meta. Obviously this guy is using it right now and it's actually gonna be good against us, but you know, Harima is so popular, our base and so on, even though Harima is a lot worse than our base. But if, if I had my own, own support Wukong, it probably could be pretty good against those same type of teams. Maybe I should go with that. Maybe I'll mix it up again. I'm still mostly using Rotos because he has better matchup against Harima than Wukong does. Should I go for... I don't know if I can even kill it. Yeah, I was thinking, should I go for the kill on Wukong or Bastrip? But I guess we'll go with the Bastrip. We, we need to get rid of the, yeah, the stone skin, <laughs> which we didn't, of course, and I'm sure his Wukong is gonna st steal a stone skin from my Angora, <laughs> which is what happened in uh, before in the other battle. Uh, I think I can waste the revile. Even if Mikaki dies instantly, we're at least gonna get the get the buff strip back, we could try again to remove the stone skin. Okay. I I'll take that. I, I need it. I needed some good RNG. Okay, nice. Can can the Taras one shot my dots with the A2 though? Oh he oh he doesn't have it, okay. I hope to see if he takes a turn. Does does she have the A2 back? No? Oh okay, she does, never mind. Well we can still buff strip it, but I almost thought maybe we could uh stun some people in the in the team. Okay, finally Rodos can, can get the weak hit, nice. Uh, if I re revive the Mikoki now, he's gonna die instantly. Should I do it anyway? I'll do it. Yeah, let's do it.
I think he has the AoE, but yeah, he doesn't have any buffs, so he wouldn't want to go for it. Nah, that's not good. If I didn't get weak hits, we could still win it, but it's looking kind of bad. I think we're not... Oh, okay, that's kind of good. I don't think we're gonna win this one, though. I guess with attack buff... Wait, can he... Okay. I guess I need to just YOLO and go for the A3. I think it's po if I get the Hail and Smasher Brock and I don't get weak hit, I think I could kill maybe the UDK right now. Yeah, okay, yeah. With the attack buff, because, you know, attack buff does make a big difference, and I'm often kind of used to fighting without the attack buff, because, you know, there's a lot of things to deal with, and I'm usually locked out, and I don't normally have it, but Rotos does hit still way harder with the attack buff. Even though I'm not going full attack and I'm also building I'm more focusing on HP on him than attack. Wait, why can't I... Yeah, okay, it's just gonna do it on auto. I couldn't click on the revive on Mikage. Couldn't do it last time. I think her hitbox is a little bit uh, different than it looks or something like that. Okay, surely there's no way that we can lose at this point. I always say that and I end up losing, but come on. Two polymorphs and one stun. What, what could go, go wrong here? Okay, two stuns and two polymorphs. Let, let the record be correct. I probably could have killed the Sifi with the with if I changed the form on Mika Candy Day 3, but we were being extra safe about it. But yeah, I don't know I don't know how many people are um I hope you didn't get bored or annoyed by my random political uh, political rants about de destiny getting in trouble and so on i don't know because you know i talk about it kind of frequently but it's not really main big main main focus of my channel i don't know how people really feel about politics i don't probably most people don't really care about it or don't want to talk about politics on Ray channel but happens I think pretty much on every stream, we don't, well, not on every stream, but on multiple streams we have talked about politics in the past, maybe like every other one or something like that. Not not like a big part, but you know, when we're talking for many hours, usually somebody says something and we talk a little bit about it. Well, to be fair, you know, maybe Destiny drama isn't even, it's political, but it's also just YouTube drama, and probably a lot of people on the internet are kind of into it, so. Like, like I said, Destiny is one of those people that I kind of like him, I think sometimes he, he says some <laughs> things that I, I disagree with him very big time, I think generally he's uh, more reasonable than most people that make videos about politics, but yeah, I kind of like him even though I don't really like, uh, I don't really align with him on politics. I, I would say that, um, wait, let me think about this first. Should we go? Should we go with the Stalos again?
I think we're probably gonna go with Stalos, but who is gonna be my my other pick? Triple Nogar? Maybe we'll go with Triple Nogar. Wait, I totally forgot what I was gonna say there. Oh yeah, about like I would say that um, on economics, I will say I'm probably more left than Destiny, even though it's kind of weird because in the US politics, Destiny is considered like very left. But I think on many issues, it's kind of you know center right, except you know those uh, like s social issues where he's kind of on the leftist side of it. Ugh. Are we gonna go? Yeah. Staldo's gonna be good here. I don't think... Yeah, I think we're gonna go with UDK, actually. I thought I was gonna go with Staldo's, but not against Taras. I would say that on economics, I'm more left than Destiny. I mean, I support stuff like public healthcare and, you know, um, social democracy like we have in Nordic countries. I know in US you kind of... Um, when you say social democracy, you think about something else, but I'm talking about the, uh, the dictionary definition, not some like uh, uh, colloquial US uh, spoken definition, I, I mean the literal definition of it. The Nordic countries are uh, uh, social democrats, I mean US is, but we are more than US is. But I, I support that kind of stuff, public healthcare, public universities and so on. I think those are super important and on US I don't think most people support it and Destiny doesn't even though he's kind of on the left so I would say that on many economic things I'm probably I'm not super left but I'm more left than him let's say like yeah I'm not <laughs> I'm not like I'm not like anarchist I'm not like communist but I do think uh, public healthcare is is good idea and I think there's many arguments to be made for that I think on social issues, so yeah, I would say that he's more right there than me, but I think on social issues, he's kind of like left and I'm libertarian, so we mostly align, but there's some like, some differences. But okay, we, we, we got uh, we got one shot at, on Ankara, so I think this one is lost. We lost the stone skin. I would say I'm like left libertarian, but I don't think that really means anything and you can make all kinds of uh, conclusions from that that I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't agree with it, so it's kind of hard to define. But I would say that on like social issues, um, I'm super libertarian, so I think I think people should do what they want. I'm not really, you know, on to some political stuff, I'm, I might not agree with, let's say, people like Destiny um, for the same reasons, like I reached the same conclusions on many things, but for different reasons, let's say. But you know, I think people should do what they want if they don't harm other people, I don't, and I don't really care how they live their lives, I'm not like um, conservative in that sense. But on, on economics, I'm not like super conservative at all. I'm not like, you know, I'm not super left. Well, it, yeah, it depends what you mean, but I think uh, like I'm a social democrat. That's the most uh, most basic way to put it. And even though I don't think my politics are super like um, non-mainstream in like the average people, but I think politics, my opinions are not super <laughs> represented. Like the people who might broadly agree with me on economics, I think on social issues, we're gonna have some big uh, like disagreements on like principles and you know. No, no, not not to get like I don't want to bring up any specific issue, but I think basically I'm gonna agree with uh, 
parties on broadly on one aspect of those two things, but not both on social issues and economics. Should I go with uh, Wukong? Let's go with Wukong. And obviously, I'm not I'm not talking about the U.S. politics here because you guys have two parties. In Finland, we have tons of parties. There's a couple new parties every election, pretty much. But even here, like I said, I often vote for <laughs> fringe parties that are not even gonna get elected, like the. Finnish Pirate Party, I voted for them a couple times. Um, but then they kind of went, let's say, woke. They used to be like libertarian, and then they kind of went woke. And I don't really agree with some of their new stances anymore. They used to be very sensible on, on like everything before. I used to align with them. Now I don't, but I still align with them <laughs> probably more than most parties. So I still vote for them depending on the candidate and election and that's pretty much the only party that i kind of uh, kind of align with in finland and they don't have a single ah uh, that's not good the, okay we lost it the, the finnish P pirate party even though it's kind of weak on sweden and you know basically all of the european countries have pirate parties it's kind of a thing here we which might sound weird for us people but basically you know pirate parties let's say the um the european libertarians it's they're basically libertarians the the pirate part about the team might distract you a little bit but it obviously means that they have some disagreements with like music labels about copyrights and that kind of stuff but they are libertarians let's say left-leaning libertarians but in finland pirate party doesn't doesn't have a single person in the parliament and they don't have any power i probably would even if i have some disagreements disagreements with them these days if they had more power i would probably be more <laughs> more prone to vote for them like my father is saying that i should vote for people that can win but they can't win and uh, you know, there's some things that I bigly disagree with them about. Anyway. Uh, also, by the way, here, here's a funny, funny um, thing for you U.S. people. So, um, like, like I said, in Finland we have many parties, and hmm, would be good to have in it the gear right now. I probably could, could, could put a not so good set on him. In 4 piece stone skin, since I'm not using Helicat anymore a lot. Maybe I should consider that. Maybe I'll go with Tormi, let's see what he does. So, in Finland we have many parties, including... Um, well, the party's name is basically Christian Democrats. And obviously, you know, being a religious party, they are not like um, super woke, but they are they are a lot more left than the conservatives or like the super religious people in, in the US. They are more like um, working class leftists, even though they are um, conservative on some social issues. But you know they are they are like social democrats. They are not like they are actually kind of um, kind of on the left on those things. I know I I spoke about that I think maybe once or twice with some U.S. people, and they were surprised that we have like left leaning um, Christian party. But it kind of is. They they are kind of you know on the center. 
that depending on the easel they can they can be either on the left or right in our parliament but I will generally say that they are still left basically on everything except the woke stuff you know they they are big supporters of you know like welfare and you know public health care and that kind of stuff but they, then on like couple of things they are like a little bit center or center right I actually I sometimes when I do those uh, polls when there's elections sometimes I get some Christian Democrat candidates very high that is always shocking to me but it happens uh, pretty frequently so I guess I do have some overlap with them which I which I used to be surprised about I mean I'm not like a super religious person let's say I used to be a little bit more anti-religious when I was younger N not not really like that anymore but I'm still not you know I'm not traditional and I'm not super religious I think we have this <laughs> okay let's not get ahead of ourselves I feel like we can do this but um, maybe not we're getting owned by the Fatalis again. I think this matchup is doable though. I, I like that matchup, but... Um, should I do cleanse or... No, let's actually do... Wait. Okay, yeah. Let's do the cleanse. I'll just do the revive on the next... Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, I should have done the revive. Anyway, I think we're good. All of the threats are CC'd, so... Okay, it, it feels to feels nice to fight against another slow team where I'm actually faster than them. Mika, Mika actually getting some stuns off and me controlling them is um feels nice. Uh, even the refresh proc, I'm sure he's not happy about that, but I think um I should either go for the A1. I think he can, probably can kill me. Okay. Let's just go for... He has the UDK. Let's just go for the buff strip. Let's not even use the stun yet. Can, can I survive 1A? Oh, he went for the A1. Okay. He should have gone for the A1. The A, A1 might have potentially been able to kill the Mikake, but um, it didn't. I mean, the, the AoE noob was not gonna go through the shield, so... Well... <laughs> it's, it's still gonna take a while for me to kill him, and the Fatalis totally can kill my Ankara, so... Maybe I shouldn't be that certain yet. I'm seizing them, but I hardly have any damage with my <laughs> Thormin. Oh, wait. Did I just... I think that was the full fear. Did I just lose my cooldowns? Oh, come on. Surely we're not gonna lose this one. Y yeah, it's, it's the same issue I always complain about. that uh, Thormin is good on paper, and we were able to CC them a lot, but our damage is just non-existent. Yeah, the Wukong is gonna be Isu, but at least he can weak hit on us.
Okay, uh, the fatal shields are freezing him, and then Wukong passive is freezing him too, so both of them are kind of getting self-screwed, but I think the most damage that we're, <laughs> we're doing the fatal is actually the uh, the Mitral A1 and not the Tormin damage. The poisons can at least <laughs> at least do something about him. Wait, this, yeah, this guy doesn't. He has the same issue as me. He literally doesn't have any any champion with six star polymorph. So I went over seizing him a lot, but uh, he's not able to do anything about it. Wait, why, why am I not able to? Okay, I misclicked. I don't know if it's gonna be risky if I go to the other form. For ally attack, maybe I should just stay on this one for the stuns and the passive so that Wukong doesn't take any turns. <laughs> and then it instantly takes a turn. We, ne we need to have weak it on Angor if he. Yeah, ah, if he has the A2. I guess we lost it. Almost thought I had it, but it, you know, took forever to kill him with the Tormin, so... Both, both battles that we had today against Fatalis we lost. Anyway, that that's a weird one. <laughs> we were mostly talking about politics to the end of the, uh, the session. I'll stream on Friday. And I'll, I'll probably make some videos about sieges this week or next week, but um, there's still like six days on the until the first battle. Anyway, that's it for this video. Have a nice day and see ya.